In this tutorial, we're gonna make the absolute basics of a modular kit. Now it's by no means all you need to know, but it should get you up and running making your own modular environment kits. Now I've tried to make this as short as possible, but this is a step-by-step -step tutorial and with everything in the 3D modeling world, it is gonna take you some time to complete. And if you want the files and assets for this, you can find them in the link below. So here we have this uh, little saloon that I've made, uh, just a wooden shack basically. And this could be recombined into all different kinds of shapes using these very simple modular pieces. Now this isn't made of many pieces at all. So if we look over here, you can see the entire kit, everything except the little sign that I put up there. And you can see it is just a wall piece, a floor piece, uh, the opening for a door. And then we've got these uh, little wooden pieces here. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that we have our folder structure set up because doing environment art can get very messy very quickly. I mean, even a simple environment piece can have a couple of hundred assets in there. So, you know, you wanna make sure that you've got stuff separated and you're not making a mess. So what we've got here is an FPX folder. Now this is for the files that you export from Maya ready to go into UV4. So there's no duplicates in there, there's no test, there's no whips or anything like that. It's just the files that you're about to import into UE4 so that you know there is no secondary stuff or unused files in there. Then we've got our Maya folder and you can put all your Maya assets in there, all your Maya scenes. Um, and that can have all your backups and your multiples and stuff like that. Then you've got your texture folders and inside there I may have um, a folder for each one of my textures but I also might have a substance folder so I've got my work in progress files uh, that I can edit and then I also have the actual exported textures in there as well ready to go into UE4 and then I also have my UE4 folder which I will save the UE4 scene into I may also have R&D folder uh, where I can put kind of all my concepts uh, my reference folders and stuff like that that I might gather for my project and also I might put a media folder in there which I might use to store screenshots from UE4 and renders of my assets and stuff like that. Okay so the first thing we want to do in Maya is set up our grid if you've not already done that these grid points are set to one unit piece and we want to go to grid options and I'm just going to set this to a thousand and then grid lines every 100 and the subdivisions by 10. And I've also set the axis and grid lines and numbers to something quite visible. I'm going to apply that. So these units are one. So if we draw a cube across here like this, we can see that the width is 20. So that's 20 centimeters and the height is 30 centimeters. So first thing we want to do is get some reference in here. So I like to use the SK mannequin and we drop that in there. We can see we have now a good reference for a human size. So if you've not got the SK mannequin, you can also just draw out a cube. And roughly a 180 height cube is roughly six foot. So it's a tallish person. And that's a good way to judge heights of stuff. So let's just move this guy out of the way for now. So the rules around your modular kit might change depending on who you're making this modular kit for. If you're working for a studio, they'll tell you how they do theirs and the rules that they follow for that. But the principles of making modular kits, if you make one for yourself, is to stick to a size. So you've got to think of it a bit like Lego. You can't just have random size pieces because they will not fit together or as you create a bigger scene, it will start to go out of sync from the grid. So you've got to make all your modular pieces or your very base modular pieces to a grid system. And the second rule is that the pivots have got to be in the correct place. They've got to be able to be snapped together within UE4 on the grid. Okay then, so let's make our first piece. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to Polygon Cube here and if you've not done already, go to create, go down to polygon primitives and turn on inter interactive creation. This allows us to drag our primitives out on the grid. Holding X, I'm going to click on the center of the grid here and I'm gonna drag out a wall piece. And I'm gonna do this one unit thick and 10 across, let go, keeping hold of X, I'm gonna then drag upwards like this. And to get the height right, what I'm gonna do is right click and go to vertex select them top vertices. And then I'm gonna hit spacebar and find my front view and hit spacebar there. And then I'm gonna drag that out to, I'm gonna do it to three 
tall, so that's 300 units tall. And that'll be the height of my ceiling. And it's completely up to you what size you want to make this, but you want to try and stick to the grid and in such a way that you can do kind of multiples of two. So the next wall piece will be twice as wide. And I've always found that doing it 10, 20 and 30 is kind of a good standard to stick to. Now you can see with this wall piece that the back of the wall is here and the back of the wall is against this um, center grid line. And this is the front of the wall. And so that the details of the wall have all come forwards and nothing will pass beyond the point of this. So if I wanted to do um, kind of bricks sticking out or all kinds of detail, if this was a sci-fi wall and it had metal panels and stuff like that, they'll all be on this side and nothing will penetrate through the back of this. Now the reason I do this is because if say I had another wall piece, if I had another room behind this, so we create another wall piece here, any details that I have on here will stick into this room and not penetrate through this wall piece because if it did that then we would have to start changing the shapes of the room. Now not all pieces can be like this if I wanted an alcove here or some sort of indentation wall panel access vent box or something that needed to go beyond the point of the wall then I would have to make adjustments to the other room to allow for that. So it's not a hard and fast rule but it's something to consider and it does make your life a lot easier. So with this wall piece made, the next thing I need to do is move the pivot point. The pivot point gets placed in the center of a new asset, which is not where we want it for a modular piece. What we wanna do is when we place these walls into our scene, we want the bottom corner to be on the grid, snapped to the grid and against the next piece of wall. So to, the best way to do that is if we hold D, which allows us to manipulate this pivot, grab the middle of this pivot and holding V for vertex snap, we can snap this to the bottom corner vertex here. Alternatively, you can hold D and X to snap this pivot to a grid point. And that's helpful if you don't have a vertex right there. But you basically want it to be on the very bottom corner against the first grid point. So now if we duplicate this piece and hold X, we can snap this to itself. And we can keep doing that to make a nice modular section like this. So that's our first modular piece nice and neat and snaps together. So as I want to keep this modular kit simple, this could be our first modular piece, but I just want the one, so I'm gonna make it slightly wider. So if I select these vertices here and hold X, we can snap these to 20 wide, and that will allow me a nice big wall piece. And also if we then duplicate this, we can make a door section as well from that one. So let's name this. So I'm gonna name this Saloon wall a medium so it's extremely important to make sure that the name of your asset or your modular piece is immediately obvious as to what it is so imagine you have one scene with a hundred different modular pieces that can become very confusing when you want to pick a very specific piece to place in your scene imagine if you have uh, three different types of brick wall and each one of them pieces of brick wall has four size variants and each one of them four size variants has three different damage variants. You can see how it can become very complicated very quickly if you don't actually write in what it is straight into the name of that, that modular piece. Okay, so we've got our wall piece there. The next thing to make is the floor piece. So I'm gonna make quite a large piece here. So if we, again, if we hold X with our Q primitive and drag out from that corner point, and we're gonna make this 20 by 20 and one unit thick. Okay, so you can see it matches our first piece. And then I'm gonna hold D and V and I'm gonna drag that pivot straight into the top corner here. And then once that's snapped into that top corner, I'm just gonna hold X and I'm gonna move this down to the grid point there. And the reason that is because I just want to make sure that the top surface of this floor piece is going to be aligned with the grid so that it's not gonna be sticking through his feet or anything like that. Um, so that's a good way to simplify things. And then I'm going to just copy this name here and paste it onto this. And I'm going to make this floor a medium. So floors can get quite complicated and you might need a lot of different variants to, to snap them all together. So just quickly, if you say you had a 
you wanted a line running around the edge of a room, you'd need a piece with a line on like that. And you'd also need a corner piece where the line curves as well. So you'd need to kind of build up a jigsaw puzzle of pieces to make various shapes. So you've got to think about that and, and what you will need from your kit. But this is just going to be a straight wooden floor. So I'm going to just use this one size fits all. And this is, add this as a tile and texture, we could actually make it huge. Um, but we'll keep it like this so that we have a little bit of flexibility in where we play stuff. So the next step before we can go into UE4 with these pieces is to make sure that they have at least a basic unwrap. So what I'm going to do is select this one. I'm going to open up my UV editor and I like to snap my UV editor window to here. And I also like to put the UV toolkit here as well. So I can switch them quite easily and I can also see the models in screen at the same time. So with this one selected, we can see it already has kind of a basic unwrap. So let's see which the front face is. So as this is just a primitive cube, we can see it already has a basic unwrap. And if we just select it and hit unfold, we can see that it's actually a decent, decent unfold. Uh, and then we can go to uh, arrange and layout, and orient shell. So I'm going to snap the top of this off so that the back of this is separate. And that allow me to manipulate a little bit better. And I'm going to hit layout uh, for a simple layout. Now, when you're laying out stuff, if you don't have a gap between your islands, go to modify, go to layout, and make sure that you've got some pixels in your shell padding and tile padding. And this should be dependent on how big your textures are going to be. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail about how to use shell padding in this video because it is meant to be a very simple video, but I will link you to Malcolm341's excellent tutorial on shell padding and mitmaps below. Now, you can see that we have actually got a little bit of wonkiness to these UVs, even though we've orientated them. You can see it is slightly um, out of line. So what we can do is go to, because this is just square and it's pretty close, we can just hit straighten UVs and that'll just straighten them up a little bit. And the reason we want to do this is we want to try to avoid anything that forces anti-aliasing if we don't need to do it uh, because it just adds unnecessary pixels. So something that's square like this and we can have it square on the UV map, let's try to make it as neat as possible. So again, I'm just going to do a really quick unwrap with the floor piece, but I'm also going to separate each face into its separate tile and then do a quick, simple layout. So now we're going to go to... Uh, delete history and freeze transformations make sure they're clean that brings us to the next kind of rule of modular kits and that's to make sure that they're exported correctly so what i actually like to do is to have my main pieces over to one side and then i like to have another section of my mayor scene where i have a duplicate of these pieces and i actually build a little temporary version of the scene so that gives me an idea of my pieces in context and every time I'm happy with a piece, I'll move it over here and this will be my modular kit. And I'll also make sure they're all oriented in the same direction. We now want to export each one of our pieces to the FBX folder ready to be put into UE4. Now, if we do that from where they are, it will mess it up because the pivots will move to the center of the world, but the assets will stay in the same place relative to the center of the world in Maya. So we need to move each one of our assets to the middle of the world. So the pivot is on the center, then export them. So what we need to do is move these either by hand to the center of the world and then export them. Or if we select each piece and then go to this little fold out here, make sure that the move is selected and hit zero, zero, zero to center that to the world. Then we can export them out and they should have the pivot in the correct place in UE4. Once they're in the center of the world, we can select each one of these. I like to copy the name, go to file, export selection, find our FBX folder, paste in the name of the file, make sure that animation isn't on and it's just a simple FBX or exporting, export the selection. Now, if you've not got the FBX export option here, you can go to Windows, Settings Preferences, Plugin Manager, search for FBX and make sure that it's ticked loaded and auto load for them. Now you've got lots and lots of models to export. It can kind of get a little bit tedious to move them, export them, name them, and bring them all back into place. So a really great plugin is this PBUDK. And if you search on Google for PBUDK, you should be able to find that no problem. Uh, but if we open this up here, you can see we have an export path here, which is the FBX folder, which we can assign to our FBX folder. 
And then we can select these, make sure that the naming convention is correct, add them to our list here. And then we can select these and hit export selected. And what that will do is it will move these pieces to the center of the world, export them, and then the brilliant thing is it will move them back again to where they originally were. So it just makes a, a tedious operation really, really simple. Okay, so let's get these into UE4 and set up this as a basic uh, white box. So what we can do is if we open a new project, we can go to games and we wanna select a first person. So that gives us a character and we can walk around our scene. And then we want to set our folder as our UE4 folder that we created. And then we wanna give it a name and then create project. And then once that's open, we can go to file, new level, and we just want to select default. And this will give us everything we need for a basic environment. So we've got our player, we've got a ground plane with collision, we've got the light, directional light, which is the sun and the sky box. And we also have a skylight and some atmosphere, atmospheric fog. We also have a reflection sphere so that our textures have something to reflect from. So what we're going to do is go to the folders and we want to create a new folder. And this one can be materials. And then we also want a models. And in materials, I like to create a textures. So we have our basic layout for our folders ready to go. So let's open up models and what we can do, we can go to add import or we can directly drag our FPXs from our FPX folder. So I'm going to select these two here and just drag them into the scene. Now in this dialog box, we want to make sure skeletal mesh is unticked. We can uh, generate collision to give us some basic collision. And we also want to make sure that textures is set to do not search and do not create material because we want to set that up ourselves. We want to also untick import textures. So now we can import all and you should have something like this. So let's, um, let's just double click one of these and we can see we have our floor piece and we can see we have UV channel zero. And the reason we did a basic un unwrap like this is because when we bring this in, it auto builds the UV light map, which is what we need to bake shadows to this once we put the lighting in and that will be based on this UV unwrap that we did and it will make a new channel UV channel one and you can see this is the light map here so let's drag these into the scene and they should auto snap to the grid okay so I'm going to move it up by a couple because I want this whole scene to be a little bit higher and we've got grid snapping on and it's set to 10. And we've also got 10 degrees of rotation snapping and we've got uh, scale snapping as well. So we can start to lay this out. Now we grab the move tool and hold alt. We can duplicate this piece and it should snap perfectly in place. At this point, you'll be able to see whether you have any gaps if you've accidentally not snapped that pivot to a vertex or to a grid point, you'll be able to see it here. So this is why we move these pieces into our UE4 scene so early so that we can we can see problems before we put too much detail in. So at the moment, these are just cubes. If we'd put the pivot in the wrong place, it would be very easy to fix. Um, or if the, the scale of this wasn't quite to the grid, if it had lots and lots of detail on, then it would be harder to fix. But at this stage, we can see it all works. So now we know we can just update these pieces. Um, and they should stay the same. So let's just do a quick layout of our scene here. So I'm gonna hold rotate and I'm gonna hold alt and I'm just going to clone and rotate that at the same time and then move that into place. And you can see these corners are overlapping here, um, but we're gonna put some trim pieces on there to hide any overlapping pieces. Now a more complex modular kit might have an actual corner piece that kind of joins these two pieces neatly, like maybe a curve or something like that. So I'm going to also duplicate the floor. So I'll keep duplicating these pieces until I have my basic three by three saloon. And you can hold F on the keyboard or hit F on the keyboard to focus in on whatever piece you have selected. And then I am going to select all the floor and I'm gonna duplicate that up to make the roof. 
like so. So now we have our basic room. We can just put a point light in that so we can get that from lights or basic here. Just drag a point light into this room. And I'm going to turn the radius down to say 600. Put the power on five for now. Okay. And we're going to use light baking in this. So what I want to do is I'm just going to select both of these, right click and go to edit. When we use light baking, what we have is we have our texture map. And then on top of that is a second texture map created from the shadows that are baked. So that would be UV channel one. Okay. And now by default, this is six to, set to 64 by 64. So that's 64 pixels of information per piece. And the reason that this is set low is because every time we duplicate a piece, it will actually create a new shadow map for that piece. Okay. So if you have a hundred floor pieces, that's going to be a hundred separate shadow maps for the light bake, which can start to add up after a while and become quite dense and heavy. So we want to always try and keep these as low as possible. Now, as this is just going to be this single piece, we can set this quite high so that we can get nice, sharp uh, resolution on this. So I'm going to set this to 256. Save um, with the wall piece as it's going to be one of the largest pieces in the scene. I'm going to set it to 512. Plenty of resolution for the lights to bake onto. So we can save them and close them. And then I'm going to hit build scene. So now we've built our lighting. You can see we have these dark lines in between stuff here. Now, there's, they're not always completely possible to remove, but there are ways you can reduce it. Now, one of the main reasons this is being caused is if we look at our UV map here, you can see that these edges are attached. So if we go to our light map, you can see where these edges are attached. When the shadow is, is baked onto it, which of course where these pieces are touching, there will be shadow, it will blur slightly and you'll be able to see it overlapping and kind of coming around that corner to the front. So an easy way to reduce that is if we go back to Maya, select our UV shells for the wall, go to edge and just snap those edges off, cut them, relay out that, and then re-export that. We can right click our wall and re-import and then bake this as well. The second thing we can do is just increase the lighting quality a little bit. So let's put this up to medium and then bake lighting only. And you can see the lines on the walls here have disappeared. And these will also be reduced with more complex lighting. And once the textures are on as well, it'll be very hard to see. So now we have our basic layout. Let's get some textures on this. For the walls, I'm just going to do a simple tiling texture. Now I've already made this. So if we have a look here, I've got this simple wooden tiling textures. It's kind of stylized. And I'm going to use that to tile uh, the main bulk of this, of this environment. Now I won't show you how to make this in this tutorial, but I will link these textures below. And I also show you how, if you want to make your own version of this, you can do that using my tutorial on how to make simple tiling textures. So what we can do is jump back into Maya and we want to right click our model and assign a new material. And we can be, it can be anything. I'm just going to pick Lambert and in the color slot, I'm going to select a file and then that file can be our texture planks tile a and i'm just going to select the base color and then we can turn on material up at the top here so now we can see our tiling texture so it's time to line this up so we select our model and then go to uvs you can see that the tiling texture is in the background and of course it's the tiling texture so it's one to one on one uv tile uv tile zero so now, if you can't see the, the assigned material, you should be able to toggle that on and off. And if you want to see more than just this one grid space, you can go to images, image range. And then if we put, say, minus one, minus one and apply, we can get a bigger image range to to apply. You can see it like that. So I'm going to stack these two front and back stack shells. And I'm also going to stack these. Okay, just move these off to one side. And then using this as kind of like my guide to how big these planks are, I'm going to just move the little fell into place. 
Okay, and I want the planks to be slightly smaller than that. So I'm just going to scale both of these. So I'm doing the front and back at the same time. And I'm going to line them up at the bottom of this. And if I select UVs, I'm also going to line it up with one of the borders here as well. That will stretch them a little bit, but as this is a quite a simple texture and quite a cartoony texture, you won't notice um, a, a bit of stretching. Now, with this modular kit, the more you can get out of it, so the more stretching you can do and stuff like that, obviously, the further the kit will go. Um, but it does depend on what kind of textures you're using and what kind of style it is. With very simple cartoony stuff, you can get you can push it a lot further and you can get a lot more stretching out of the texture. Um, but if it's very realistic, then any stretching will be much more noticeable. You can still do some, but it will start to be apparent in your game and lower the quality. And you'll also want the texel density, which is the size of the textures, to be the same throughout all your models, which is a little bit less important with stylized stuff. And also, if there's anything like writing on numbers or anything like that, imagery on that texture then obviously when that stretches that will be a lot more apparent if you know you've got some writing that starts to get stretched out of wax so think about what it is you're making first and whether you want to have words on a texture or have it as a separate image on top like a, a decal or something like that okay so i'm happy with that now i just want to select these two and i'm going to go to transform and get so i've got the size of that and then I'm going to select these ones and click set so that they're the same size and texel density. And then I'm just going to place these here. And we won't really see these, so it doesn't matter as much where they're placed. Okay, and it doesn't matter if you go over the UV tiles for these because this is a tiling texture. It's not going to be taken to Substance Paint or anything like that, so it can be placed um, a bit more freely on this, on this map. So now we just need to give this material name. So we need to go across to Lambert 3 here. And I'm going to call this Planks Tile A. So then I'm going to do the same for the floor, but, but this time I'm going to select the floor, right click and go down to assign existing material and select that Planks Tile A. I also want these to tile a bit more perfectly, so they need to be one to one with the grid. So I'm going to select these two shells. I'm going to stack shells. Then I'm going to move these ones out of the way for now and then I'm going to go to UV right click UV and holding X I'm going to snap these to the top of the UV tile one which you can see here which is the black line now the one-to-one -one with that UV tile so that should have perfect tiling across these planks and then I'll stack these ones I will get and set and then I'm just going to place these here. If you want to snap them to the grid, you can snap the pivot to a vertex and then snap that vertex to the grid point. Now you just want to double check that it's definitely in line. As you can see, it's not on this side. So I'm going to select those UVs again. Snap them across. Check it all the way around. Okay, so I know that should tile perfectly. And then I'm going to snap that to the grid as well. And again, I won't be able to see the edges of this, so it doesn't really matter where that goes. Okay, so with that done, we can now export these again. And then we can go back to UE4 here and re-import this. Select these two and re-import. So that will update these. Can ignore that. So we want to create a material now. So we go to Materials. So to show our materials on here, we need to import them. So let's go to materials and textures, and then we can drag the planks textures across here. And we have three for this. So we have a base color, a normal, and a mix map. So if we drag them in. You can see this bright one is the mix map, and that contains occlusion, roughness, and metallic in RGB. Uh, before we do anything though, we need to double click this, and this is very important. The map, the textures will not show up properly if you don't do this first. So whenever you import this mix map in, open it up, untick sRGB, and hit save. Okay then, so let's go to materials, right click, and create new material. And I'm going to call this planks tile A. Double click that to open it. 
And then while that's open, I'm going to open my textures here, select all three of these and drag them into the material editor. This is just a very simple material. What we're going to do is put the base color into base color and the normal into normal. And then for the mix map, what we want to do is plug these into the corresponding slots. So if you forget what it, what this contains, you can read it in the title here, Occlusion Roughness Metallic. And an easy way of remembering that is the top one, which is the red R, goes to the bottom slot on what this contains. So R goes down to the bottom, which is Ambient Occlusion. The next one up goes to Roughness. And the bottom one here goes to the top one here, which is Metallic. So it's just an inverted arrangement. And you can see that's showing up nicely there. So we can save that and close it. And then we can go back to our models and we want to select both of these, right click and edit. And while that's open, go back to our materials folder and we want to drag these into material slots. Now, because we've imported these a few times, they've got this second Lambert material slot here. We can actually just delete that. And then we can grab our planks tile and put it into the remaining slot and save. Close that one. Again, delete that extra slot. Drag this into here. Save and close that. So now you can see our scene has our textures in it. So the next step for this is to make a doorway, which is simply just a version of this wall. So if we go back to Maya. We can grab our wall piece here and duplicate it and just move it across. So I'm going to delete these ones now because we don't need them. So we want to work from the outside of this. So I'm just going to duplicate the wall on either side so I can see what I'm working with. Okay. So then I can go to this middle piece and this is going to be my doorway. And I'm going to right click and go to edges and I'm going to drag select and select all the edges across the middle and then shift right click and select connect tool. And then holding shift and middle mouse button, I'm going to drag to the side to create two. Hit W to accept, and then I'm going to switch to scale and just drag those apart. Now you can see it's affecting the UV at the moment. So to stop it doing that, what we can do is if we double click our scale tool and go down here and select preserve UV. Now if we scale this, it will move those edges without moving the UV. So let's just get that there. And we need our mannequin to help us judge the size of this opening. Okay, so I reckon it needs to be a little bit bigger than that. So again, I'm going to select these edges. I'm going to double select one, hold shift and double select the other, double click even. And then back to scale and I'm just going to scale it out. But this time I'm going to turn off preserve UV because that is on an edge there and there, which I like. So I'm going to do that. Now this will squidge this a little bit. And like I said before, it's fine for this stylized texture as long as we don't overdo it. So then I want a edge across there. So this time I'm going to go up here and select multi cut and holding control. I'm going to put a slice in here like so. And then in face mode, right click face. I want to select all the faces in the middle there and delete. Then as this is kind of stylized, I want to make it look a little bit wonky. So I'm going to select these verts here and move them across a bit. Not too much. I don't want to overdo it. I also don't want to stretch these textures too much. Go like that. And where it's a little bit warped, I'm just going to select these top ones and move them over a little bit to try and keep them as straight as possible. I don't want it looking too out of whack. Now, of course, this is much more difficult to do if it's realistic. That stretching will become more apparent. And the reason it sometimes kind of goes like this um, is because every poly is separated into uh, two tries and the tries don't render um, warp textures quite as well. So you can actually add more edges to it to help smooth things out a little bit. So you can see if you can imagine there's an edge across there, or maybe it's that way, you can actually kind of see it. That's where the, the warp will be. So if we actually add another edge there, we'll help straighten that out. That's a little tip 
if you're trying to if you're really struggling with um, warped edges when you've used tiling textures like this so you can take it or leave it you don't have to do that I might just do one in the middle there to help straighten that out okay so we've got our funky little door here and what we could do is bridge this across here but actually we don't need to do that because we're going to put some nice planks of wood as trim pieces on this and that'll cover that gap okay now before we export it let's just check out the UVs so we can see we have overlapping UVs here because that's the, the front and back uh, but that should be okay as the light map UV should be generated should actually separate so we can export that to our folder and in UE4 we can drag the door A to our models folder port Let's double click that and check it out so we can see UV channel 0 and the light maps UV channel 1 everything looks okay and let's change that light map to 512 to match the other walls and also we want to add the materials to this as well so let's go to materials folder and drag that into our material slot save that okay now let's go to models and drag the door into place rotate that round okay so now we have our wall lined up here so you can't see the the gap between at the moment because you cannot see the back faces of the inside face but that will be covered up by a trim piece anyway and we've also got this flicker in here that will also be covered up by trim now the reason we do stuff double-sided like this so instead of just we instead of just having one face we do double that's because uh, the light on the outside of this actually passes through uh, a face if it doesn't have a back face so the easiest way is to just make things cubes that way uh, we don't let light pass through there's other ways of doing it and whoever you're making the kit for will tell you how they prefer it or how they need it for the specific application uh, but generally this is a very easy way of doing it so at this point we can see that our folder structure is getting a little bit messy so we can select all our modular pieces and click create new folder and call this uh, modular sections and just neatens up our scene a little bit and then save all your files including Maya and then the next step is to create a mini trim kit that will allow us to decorate the scene and really bring it to life as an environment asset.